Now that we have our warp ready to wind back onto the warp beam, you need to make sure to hold tension evenly from the front. You'll notice my front hand, and I am winding um, with my left hand the warp on to the warp beam. Once the warp starts to roll on top of itself, you need to put in um, dividers so the warp doesn't lay on top of itself. I'm just using pieces of cardboard. Some people have sticks that um, would have come with your loom. Other people will actually use shelf liners. The reason you need to utilize this is because you don't want the warps to lay on top of each other and fall in between each other um, because this will change your tension. So it's actually a really important component of winding your warp back onto <clears throat> the warp beam. Notice that I didn't start uh, winding back again until I had even tension holding from the front. Um, about every half turn or quarter turn, I'm going to place um, one of my cardboard pieces and I'm going to continue to turn. In a few moments, I will have the camera flip to the back so you can see how I'm inserting the warp dividers or sticks, whatever um, your loom came with or that you are going to utilize. Notice that I am still keeping tension from the front, winding onto the back. I have my warp stick slash cardboard. Notice that when I insert it, I'm going to let it um, hang about two inches on each side of the warp. And so I've placed it underneath the warp. I hold tension again from the front of the loom. And then I go ahead and start winding my warp onto the warp beam. And you're going to continue this until obviously you've run out of warp. Um, and don't forget to continue to put your sticks and you don't want to wrap too much warp on top of itself. Um, this is a view from the back of the heddle, and so you'll see that I'm going to use my hook and I will go from the front and grab the warp from the back and pull it through the hole. So I have my group of two in my hand, and then I'm going to place the hook through the hole. See the two right there? Perfect. Now I'm going to take the hook, put it through the hole, grab the one of the warps that's in that slot, pull it through, it's hooked. And now I have one of the warps that was in, there were two warps in the slot, now one is through the hole. And again, you work across the width of the heddle and um, complete that process until you are finished with the width of your warp.
Now that you're done threading your um, heddle, you're going to group your warps. Um, I usually do about between a half inch and three quarters of an inch wide from the heddle. So notice that I'm getting gathering a group, I'm combing them, and then I do an overhand knot. I want my overhand knots to be um, the knot to be at about the same um, height or at the same spot and you'll notice my first one was a little bit low so I'm just adjusting that and I'm checking sorry my hand is in the way but my knots are now aligned and that is pretty um, important I'm going to adjust it slightly um, but just make sure that your knots are aligned across the width of your warp. Again, I'm taking a bundle of um, warps about a half inch to three quarters of an inch wide um, when measured at the heddle. The reason I'm saying more of a measurement and not amount of warps is because if you're using a thicker or thinner warp, um, you're going to want to adjust the amount of warps or ends that you're Bundling. So I usually say about a half inch to three quarters is getting a bit big, but it's okay, especially if you have um, thicker uh, a thicker warp. So I'm going to do that across the width of the heddle, and then we will lash our um, warp onto the cloth beam. So we're going to do a technique called lashing on, but first I'm going to create a butterfly with a wool yarn. And so my wool yarn looks like this. Um, it's a six ply, so it's definitely strong. So notice that I take some of the yarn and I'm going to lay it over my thumb and then wrap around my pinky and then around my thumb my pinky around my thumb and notice that I'm stacking the yarn on top of each other I'm not going underneath um, I don't want to cause any extra um, tangles so you always stack on top you don't do you don't go underneath like I just showed you always stack on top making the figure eight going back and forth and then once you have a good amount you can break it or cut it. Obviously, I'm having some issues. There we go. And then that end that you just cut or ripped, you're going to wrap around the cross. So I'm going to make sure that I catch all of my war or all of my yarns. Straighten that yarn out, the one that I started with. I'm wrapping it around the cross a couple times. And then I'm going to fold that end in half, tuck it underneath the area that I had wrapped, and leave that end to the side and a loop on the other side. I remove it from my hand and then flip it, and then I can pull um, the original end so nothing gets tangled. So um, just back the camera off a little bit. This is going to be your apron bar, and then you have some apron strings there. Um, it's connected to your cloth beam. So right now I'm taking that butterfly end and I am tying it to my bar, just a double knot. I want it to be in alignment with my first bundle of my warp. Um, on, I'm going from left to right, so it would be on my left side. So now I have my butterfly in hand and then I'm going to go 
with my first bundle, split it in half, and then I take my butterfly and go up the center, and I pull, then I'm going to go over the bar. Notice that my yarn is over, pulling it a bit tighter so you can see that. Um, notice that I have about an inch and a half from the bar to the knot of my work. I move to my second bundle, and this is called lashing on, coming up from the bottom, and then pulling it tight again, going over the bar, and then wrapping around, getting my third bundle of warp, splitting it in half, taking my butterfly up from the bottom, and then I will continue to do this across the width of my warp, each bundle that I've made. And again, this is called lashing on. Once you're finished going across the width of the warp, we need to make sure the tension is even. And so you can adjust the tension by pulling on your yarn that you just used to lash on your bundles of warps. I usually pull um, across left to right, starting a little bit more tightly on the left. And as I move to the right, I get a little bit looser because as you move across the um, width, if you do the same amount of tension, it will loosen up on the left side if you're moving left to right. So um, I always test it by kind of bouncing my hand across the width of the warps. And then once it feels even, I tie my yarn that I used to lash on onto the apron bar. And again, now I can actually go ahead and test it. And then if I need to adjust it at all, I can do that. So I'm going to Cut that so I don't have a long tail. Um, and then I will go ahead and test my warp, make sure it all feels even. That one feels a little loose. Um, and so does the end. So now I'm going to again adjust slightly. Notice how I pull. Um, and then with my left hand, I'm holding the tension and I'm then pulling with my right. And again, I'm pulling on the um, yarn that is over the apron bar and holding it the tension with my left hand. So I'm pulling it a lot here so I might need to adjust what I um, tied on at the end there which is fine. So I'll go ahead and untie that, retie it to the apron bar Notice that all of my um, warps are coming straight out from the heddle. Um, that's a really important component. Test the tension again. If I need to adjust it all, I can um, pull on my lashing yarn. Notice how I'm just adjusting slightly. So currently my warp is in the neutral position. Um, if I move my heddle up to the top notch there, it's going to give me, it's going to open a shed. 
Okay, so I'm going to lift my head, I'll place it in the top notch there. And then what happens is that some of my yarns, because of the slot and the hole, they separate. And so you see right there, I'm creating what is called a shed. When it's a neutral position, there's no shed opening. All the warps are next to each other. If you take your petal and go to the top, it creates a shed. But then to get your second shed, you go all the way down to the bottom. Notice how I came from the front down to the bottom, tucked underneath. And now I have my opposite shed for plain weave. Plain weave is the simplest weave structure that can be used. Um, it's over, under, over, under, and then when you pass the weft across the second shed opening, it is in the over, under, over, under, but opposite sequence. So right now I am going to um, wind some yarn onto my stick shuttle. Notice that I'm going in a figure eight um, pattern here where I go on the front of the stick shuttle to the back and then wind to the opposite front. And so you'll notice that there is a cross that's happening um, currently on the left side of the shuttle. I typically wind mine like that. You can wind them on both sides. Um, of the shuttle, but I typically stick with one side. So I'm going to put my heddle in the down position first. Notice I shove it back slightly, and now I'm going to place my stick shuttle through. This is called a shed. I always like to see if my shed is working well. You can see all of my yarns are in order and on the top. So we're going to pass that through. And then some people don't beat their, when they're spreading the warp, but I do a little bit. I'm gonna put it up into the top here, top position. And now I'll pass my second weft through. Um, again, it is in the opposite shed opening. Um, notice that I am using a thicker yarn for spreading the warp. Um, there's a couple different ways you can do this. I'm just going to leave a little bit of a um, loop at the edge. You can wrap around your apron bra if you would like to. Um, the goal of spreading the warp is to um, make it so your warps are evenly spread how they look in the reed. So I will show you how, that did, how to do that, but I'm going to beat that. You'll notice how there was a V shape from the overhand knot, um, and now it's starting to spread um, more evenly across the width of the loom. So now I am uh, seeing that there is going to be probably um, a broken warp end at some point. Um, just you can see that knot. It's not great to have a knot in your warp, um, so we're just going to keep an eye on that. Um, so I'm in my third pass. It's going to be the same shed as my first pass, so on my odd um, passes will be down and my even passes will be um, in the top notch. Again, passing across. Notice that I do have a little bit of a diagonal um, when I pass my weft. A weft is also called a pick. I am now in the top shed opening. You can see again my warp is starting to spread more evenly across the width. Pass my shuttle across. Again, I'm just having like a little bit of a loop. I have about a, um, a little bit of a diagonal as well for the take up. Um, of the warp, meaning take up is, oops, straighten that back up. 
the take up is going over and under your warps um, and you lose length um, from the weft. So that's why it's important to um, give a little bit of a diagonal as you're weaving. Again, notice that the width of the um, warp is now pretty evenly spread across the width of the heddle. So it matches the yarns coming out of the heddle match um, where you're going to be weaving. Now that I've done spreading my warp, I'm going to cut that thicker yarn off and I'm going to grab my stick shuttle that has my weft that I have wound onto it. I am using the same yarn that I have in my warp for my weft for this project. I'm going to place my heddle in the down position. I always check my shed to make sure it's still um, nicely open. And now I'm going to pass my stick shuttle through the shed. Um, I am also uh, going to weave about an inch of a hem again in plain weave. So I'm going to pass that yarn through. Notice how I took the end and about an inch in, I pulled it down to the bottom. I beat my yarn move it to the next shed. I'm going to take some yarn off the stick shuttle so it's easier to pass. Pass through the shed. And this is where having that diagonal for the take up is essential. So you wanna make sure that you're making your salvage, which are the ends of your, um, the edges of your uh, weaving looking nice. You don't want them to be too loopy and you don't want them to be too tight. So we'll go ahead and beat that weft pass, go to our next shed, pass our weft, again making sure that your edge slash salvage um, is looking good, you have your diagonal. Consider your take up, beat your yarn, next shed, pass your shuttle again across the width of your fabric, and you'll continue to do this for your inch of hemp. 